Hey everybody, Erin Ryan here. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to be talking about an experience I had very recently where a hummingbird essentially told me to get my you-know-what together. Well, you know, sort of. Okay, so let me back up a little bit. Since we've all been home for so long, I have developed this pet peeve, okay? It's not something I'm proud of. I'm a little bit embarrassed to share it with you guys, but I think that it demonstrates a really good point, okay? Especially for people who are more spiritually minded during this time, okay? So what my pet peeve is, now I, I'm a mama, okay? I've got two kids. I've got a one-year-old and a 12-year-old, and we take daily walks. Well, I noticed that on these daily walks, sometimes, honestly, two, three times a day, like we're very active trying to, you know, get outside and, and um, soak in the sunshine. What I noticed is that a lot of times, like more than you would think, people that we would clearly be in the path of, right, like we're going to intersect at some point, they would not move, like many make any attempt. And that's totally fine, except for when you're a mom with a stroller, with a baby in the stroller, with another kid. And sometimes, you know, my man would come with as well. So that's a family of four and you are one person, right? Why make the family of four move out of the way? Like why make them either go in the grass and go the long way around? And the, the stroller, well, I can do it. You know, I can push it through the grass. It's kind of hard, right? Or make us go across the street if there's not enough space. So this started to become a little bit of a thing for me, okay? And I started to get a little bit feisty and a little bit hot and bothered about it. And so what happened was I was walking my daughter the other day and this happened again. Only this time it was a lady with her dog. And it's like, lady, dogs like going in the grass. Like, why don't you go in the grass? Like, why do I have to cross? Well, she didn't have the, the dog on um, a tighter leash, you know, like a six foot leash or anything like that. She had the dog like um, a really long leash that she kind of had to carry the loose line with. So like, that's how long it was. So I knew that it was not an option for me to just kind of go in the grass and go around with my daughter. So I decided I was going to cross the street. And as I was crossing the street, I was super grumpy, like even more grumpy because again, this thing had happened, right? This thing that happened to me. And I started to get this awareness of like, Erin, girl, what are you doing? This is not you. Like why of all the things for you to get upset about right now, especially with the world as it is, why is it you're getting upset about this? Like essentially no harm, no foul, right? Like you've got legs to go around. Like where is this entitlement coming from? Where is this coming from? And it's like, right or wrong, good or bad, I wasn't having fun in my body. So I realized that as I was crossing, like I am not in feminine flow. I am not in the receptive receiving mode. I'm just super crabby. And I don't like being crabby. I don't know about you, but I don't like it. I don't like it in my body. It's not fun for me. And it's not fun for the people around me either, right? So as I'm crossing the street, I get this awareness and I start to do clearing statements for myself and clearing statements. It's just one of many ways that I clear energy. Okay. One of the nice things about what I do, which is working in an energy business, right? That's what my business is. It's energy work, Reiki, um, access consciousness, access bars, acupuncture, and Chinese herbs. When I work with that stuff, like I get to help myself, right? So I'm doing what are called verbal clearing statements in, in my head, and it's a way to clear it. And I was basically trying to take the significance off of it. It's like wherever I'm making the fact that people aren't moving for me significant, right? I'm going to clear that out. So as I'm doing that, I'm crossing the street and no sooner had I crossed the street, got back on the sidewalk that I just happened to look up. And as I just happened to look up, I saw this really beautiful little hummingbird, like flitting about, tucked towards the top of, it was a shorter tree, but tucked towards the top of the tree. And it was tucked in such a way that it would have been impossible had I still been on the other side of the street to see. And I got the biggest, goofiest grin on my face 
Why? Because in that moment, as I'm trying to clear this out, as I'm trying to figure out like, what is my problem? Right. I see this beautiful little hummingbird and I've literally, you know, I live, I've lived in the Midwest pretty much my whole life with the exception of like an eight month stint in new Orleans, which was fun by the way. It was really cool. Anyway. Um, so I was like, what is my problem? And then I look up and I see this beautiful hummingbird and hummingbirds are really special. They're very near and dear to my heart. They are an animal totem that I have worked with an animal medicine that I've worked with in the past. And they're all about joy, right? They really are the joy bringers and they, they're about tasting the sweetness of life, right? So it was like so clear to me in that moment that the very thing that I was like, oh, so up in arms about, it wasn't really an obstacle like I thought. I thought of that woman and her dog, and I love dogs, by the way, so it's not the dog, as an obstacle in my path. That's how it felt to me. Like, oh, you're doing this to me. You're not caring. You're being impolite. Like, uh, uh. But in fact, had that woman not chosen that, had I not crossed the street in that exact moment, I would have missed out on this beautiful little hummingbird who's just flitting about, doing its thing, being beautiful. And so I realized that the things that we think of as obstacles in our life sometimes are not truly obstacles at all. They actually put us back on the path, our path within our soul's alignment. And in my case, joy, the capacity and the receptivity to experience this beautiful joy. And so I totally gave up any resentment I had anywhere where I was like, oh, they're doing this or doing that. And it's so funny because we oftentimes get so wrapped up in other people's choices. But what's so interesting about that is I can't control that, right? I can't control what other people choose. I can only control what I choose. So it's kind of insane when we get so wrapped up in what other people are choosing. And I get it, right? It affects us. But it's about what do we want to experience in our bodies? Is it worth it, right, to let somebody else's choices, their actions or lack of action, right, to dictate how much joy I'm feeling in my body at any given moment? To me, that's, that's nuts, right? So we have to find, like, what are those hangups? What are those sticking points that are keeping us bound to being this crabby sort of resentful version of ourselves? And it's so interesting because looking at that, that's an old Aaron. I used to be like that a lot more, right? Like somebody cuts you off on the road, like, you know, I was totally one of those people. And I'm not saying that I'm never one of those people because that's just not true, okay? I still experience the full range of emotions like everybody else, but it's harder to get me there and it's much faster for me to let it go, okay? Because I am more dedicated to my happiness. I'm more dedicated to feeling flow in my body. I'm more dedicated to feeling joy in my body. So this adorable, cute, beautiful, majestic little bird reminded me of that truth, reminded me of my truth, which is that that's not worth my focus and attention. And so it was almost like a spell broke and all that unconsciousness just dissipated in an instant. And then what happened was suddenly I was like me again. I was feeling the sun on my face. I was more tuned into my daughter and her cute little laughter, right? Like my son wasn't with me that day. He was at his dad's. So, um, and it was just like, things were beautiful again. And then I just experienced gratitude for that woman. And here's the thing of it. I don't know what people's stories are, right? We don't know what their stories are, why they're choosing what they're choosing, right? Maybe she didn't see me. Maybe she would have moved, right? Maybe, you know, there's something else going on that I'm not thinking about. Maybe I just was too hasty. Like, who knows? And even if she didn't, even if I knew she saw me, even if, you know, she wasn't going to get out of the way, who really cares? Do I care more about that entitlement piece, right? And being crabby or do I want to experience ease? Do I want ease? I want ease. And you know what? It all worked out just fine. So the spell kind of breaks. I go on the rest of my walk. It was lovely and wonderful. And I wasn't thinking about how, oh, another person wouldn't get out of my way. What, you know, what's wrong with them? I have a baby. Why are they making the mom with the baby move out of the way? And 
So I go around, I kind of have a route I do, and I went a little bit of a different way back that day. And I actually saw the same lady again, only this time. And this is how you know if you've actually cleared an issue, by the way, is if the trigger changes. So the lady, I see her again, and then all I experience in my body is gratitude for her. That's it. I'm just grateful. And ever since then, I don't have the same reaction to people who don't move out of the way. It's really cool. I get to be me. So I'm sharing this with you because I want you to take a minute to kind of look at where within your day are you handing yourself away? Are you giving into the crabby, right? Are you giving into the entitlement? And I mean this with like zero judgment. There's no judgment in this. This is just about awareness. This is just about what you would like to experience in your body. So anywhere where you're making other people's choices significant, even when they do affect you, everywhere you're choosing outside of the joy that you could be choosing, right? The ease, the flow, take it back now, right? Like, just like this little hummingbird was basically, as soon as I saw it and it's like, you know, in the sun, right? Like just flitting about so sweetly and naturally. It was like, Aaron, girl, get your you know what together. What are you doing, right? And that's what I'm gonna be for you right now. Like, what are you doing? You don't have to. You don't have to get upset about things. We think we have to get upset about them, but we don't. You can still make good choices without that. Like you can separate those concepts from one another. Right. And at the end of the day, if I'm really that hot and bothered about people, right, I can say something from a space of kindness. And you can, you can say something socially distanced. You can hear people and still keep that. You know, I could, I could say, like, hey, you know, would you mind like going off to the side? That's an option, right? Just because I don't like that option, why is why why am I allowing ill will? to flow through me, Ugh, feels icky. I don't want that, that's not who I am. So take it back guys, like enjoy your day, enjoy your body, regardless of what other people are choosing, okay? Come back to that joy, come back to it. It's so much nicer, oh, it's so much nicer. So that is what I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If this helped you at all, or you think there's somebody who needs to hear this, please share this video with them, okay? Um, if we also come to support each other, then we can have a lot more goodwill flowing throughout. All right. Take care, my beautiful friends. Have an amazing day.